I guess I can just hold my hand with no problem. Wonderful, wonderful. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for uh, thank you for accept, accepting the invite. Uh, let's just get started straight up. I believe you are at a cricket ground. Looks like some practices. My daughter has a practice, so she's practicing in the background. I'm just sitting here on the bench, you know. Okay. Wonderful. Relaxing. Wonderful, wonderful. Anyways, good to finally meet uh, in person or on 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 uh, face to face. We've always been, you know, compatriots, uh, cricket uh, promoters, cricket administrators, cricket volunteers, cricket fans, whatever we want to call ourselves, you know, we'll, we are happy to do that. But uh, finally, good to see each other. And uh, yep. without, you know, further uh, uh, ado, I would want to just hand it over to you and give, uh, you know, the, the space to you for, give us a background of what you've been up to, how cricket has been going in in the central part of, uh, of the USA and uh, any, any tidbits that you want to uh, share? I mean, in central region, which is Midwest, uh, things are not the best, you know. Uh, and I'm more involved with the uh, women and youth. Even though locally I manage cricket league here in St. Louis, uh, there's a there's a there's hard times ball league and then there's men's hardball league. There's youth, there's youth training program, you know. I'm part of all of that. But, uh, uh, and I would say that things are not the best, you know. Uh, and I think that's the story in every zone, every, 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 uh, every region. I think East, East and West regions are, are much better. So let me just jump on to youth and, and women. I would really go talk about women because I think I'm most excited to to talk about that now. We just had a tournament that happened in Maryland with five teams that, that showed up. And uh, I think uh, if you look at last seven, eight, eight years, you would not find a women's tournament at one location with five teams. And now we are gearing up for another tournament that's going to happen in uh, July. Again, in again in, in the state of Maryland, we have 11 teams signed up. And 12th one is kind of, kind of uh, working on it. So we could have as many as 12 teams take part in in a all women tournament. And that, that would be a huge because we never had this many people, you know, come to a, a single event. And um, I think this has happened mainly because people see value. People see value of of traveling to an to an all girls tournament. Most of girls in the country are playing with playing with the boys team, you know, and and we don't even know about them, you know. So this is a platform where they actually represent, you know, the power of girls cricket in the US. So um, I, I'm I'm so glad to see that that, that things are things are actually happening, and um, and and we saw some good talent, you know. I mean, the level of the level of games which we had in our tournament in, in Maryland was huge. You know, most of games were well fought. Even the last ranked team, I'm telling you, they could have won. Any of the games, you know. So, so even though even though that team lost, uh, they didn't win any of the games. You know, I was telling the coach like, no, that each time I saw your team play, I thought you're gonna win. You know, it just because of the lack of experience, you they could not uh, end it on the winning note. You know, so the competition was 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 good, and uh, I think the the main reason that these kind of events grow because we are not involved in telling the players, you know, like which team they should play on or what they should do. A player is free to go find a team and a coach and a manager that they are absolutely happy playing with. You know, I think that is the main factor for 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 the rise of of of, of girls who get and this tournament because we basically let people choose, you know. And, and then they choose to come and play and they play with the with the, with the I mean I mean with the, with the friends so once the once the once the the girls come to a tournament you know they make some friends 
and then they want to come back not only for cricket but because they have they have made friends so i think these are the these are small small things that have that have actually uh, you know uh, caused the caused rise of the girls cricket in in the us yeah i see a lot of value i see i was i was at the at the event last saturday i couldn't find time on sunday because i was i was at the ncc cricket i see a lot of value in that and and that's the thing that got me excited i got excited few years back we did did, did some coaching for the girls but just we didn't have the numbers but this time i'm seeing a lot of numbers and it's a great yep. thing uh, uh, to to get started and i'm really excited for women's cricket more than anything else at this moment uh, to be honest great and uh, and yeah i mean we concepts we planned this event out last year i mean if you are watching our post we started yes. working on this women's tournament last october so it's not like i planned it like they they for they for is they for you know couple of days back i planned it long time back and and it has um it has we kind of started off line which is asking across the country like you no know, ladies who are who are who are in, in interested you know and then we got about we got a, about about 100 people 100 ladies who said that yes we are interested so it then takes we, time. Then it get, takes time it takes time and plan right. all these things yeah right and our plans changed if you observe our plan was something else then we evolved so we have we have changed our plan based on needs of the players so i have not put like you know my foot on the ground that this out should be we know that this is for the evolving for the thing it's so, an evolving thing right so we have evolved we have we have changed ourselves and i know that we will we'll continue to we will continue to evolve in a way where uh, we make these kind of tournaments more attractive and more useful you know so i saw i and saw the videos yeah. i saw the videos and pictures are very excited uh, to see all the camaraderie between the between the young ladies so definitely i think yeah. doing is you're doing is wonderful work uh, help help us understand more on on the youth front uh, uh, i know you've been part of the nyl so, for a while so as you know that the youth tournament now is just started in 2014 and i was not part of it then you know uh, i remember a gentleman named Gop- gopal samant uh, took a uh, gopal right so gopal was was the key you know so uh, him 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 and rajesh and priya and venu these four people got together in 2012 or or late late 2013 you know started thinking about like you know, what we should do and finally by end, by end of 13 they had some plan i know this and the, and the main reason i think like from what i know for this youth tournament was that people were not happy because the only thing happening at that time was this region versus region tournament happening once a year if you did not knew the right guy no matter how good you were you're out so there are many parents who were unhappy because they didn't get a chance so we thought like why don't we have a tour have a have a tournament at national level where everybody gets to play sure. there is no trials there is no selections right if you have the talent you come and show it you know so that was the basic basic reason why they started national youth cricket league you know and the numbers for nyc still has grown year after year because we have stayed focused on that we're not involved in 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 any other, any other politics we're not selling you any carrots we have no content tax we can get you in, in the us team you know we are offering you anything all we are offering you is simple plain opportunity opportunity to come play people will see your talent and somebody who's in in the position to pick you will pick you you know but i'm not offering you anything i don't have any anything to offer of that sort but sure. we are offering you a great a great um, a great opportunity to compete against other teams and 13 14 15 16 you know we have we have only tournament of, of this kind then what happened was that many other tournaments started everywhere in the country model around same same way that which which we had which is great thing because because we could not have handled had all the teams in the country came to our tournament you know like the tournament that's that's, that's going to happen in july in maryland we have we have we have total teams between women and youth 
we're going to have like 93 teams 93 that's teams. yes that's probably the largest cricket event anywhere in the world to be honest right and that is in spite of two more tournaments happening on same weekend in different part of the us that's so impressive had more tournaments not been happening would have been like like a lot of teams so i think it's good that you know more tournaments are happening and people have actually used the model you know so um and i and i i got involved with 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 uh, with this youth tournament in 2017 since then i should have actually i'm here and and, and our goal is to basically um, bring in new people so my whole goal is that each time each time each time go tournament i look for i look for next level of people next next gener- generation of, of of leaders because for this thing to keep keep growing we need to find next set of sets next set of people who take it forward so as i said i was not part of this so the people who started nycl all four of them are now not part of nycl today i am part of nycl and we have kanan kanan is there you uh, even know about him the vidya is there and then we have roy he is helping out so we four are current but we are working on the next next level because we know that we might be around for for two oh, like let's say two three years more then we'll be gone right, right? right. so well, it's, it's very important evolving that, thing right leadership exactly so evolving. it's very important that after i am gone this continues to grow so this is not about people who left or people who are running right now or people who will come in future it's about the kids you know so Absolutely. it's a good it's a good i mean it's a good good thing and i i really hope that that us cricket takes nycl under its fold you know because it's time that an event like this you know should be part of the national golden ball yeah it should so get recognition i offered them last yeah i've been working with them and i really think that they consider taking an event of this of this level you know under their fold and they can have their own people you know like be part, be part of it and basically kind of it it i think the most sad part of 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 an nycl is that in last 2 to 3 years like you know people talk about nycl on, on the back everybody knows about nycl but nobody will come forward at 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 the higher level and like you know and and just um, just the share that you know what these people have done have this people have done have done a good yeah, job absolutely. you know absolutely. right so that is that I mean, hasn't happened yeah. so i think that that's something which i think you know this this event has earned it by the by by the way it has ran over last 6 7 years you know and the the good thing about most another thing is that it's not owned by a league i don't own this you know right. we have different host every time you know right. the host owns the event you know but there's new owner you know there, there's new there's new host, hosting partner every year so that's another good thing about is i you know that nobody can get attached to it that this is my event what happens is that people start something you know and then they do it again then do it again and then they get so attached to it that they're doing it because it's there right with this with both girls tournament with nwc and nycl there is nobody owning the event we are just running it we are just kind of you know helping helping out but there's hosting partner for every event who actually does the does everything you know and and we are just here to bring all the teams you know but the main person who runs this tournament is the host you know and 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 it's amazing like you know every time, every every event we have every tournament we go to like you know how many people come forward to help you you not believe it it's not because they are paid is not because of of anything else it is just that when they know that this is your tournament this goes tournament this is you know they come and help because i think people understand that we are not doing this because we have a, our own personal goal or or something like that we are doing this for the kid to, for the kids and the girls so that's good thing that that i think i mean every time I, every time we have event you know and you would think that 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 how it will happen it just happens because people come out and and help you know and to me that's that's the biggest thing so the so the community involvement is very very vis- visible yeah, absolutely in what's here even so all the viewers yeah. that are going to watch this uh, you know uh, i i've been following your nycl for a number of years 
we uh, we were work very uh, close with Gopal when Gopal was here in the Bay Area. So he, he, he was part of the NCC youth program and then eventually evolved into EVA. Right. So yeah, we, we're following the uh, NYCL event uh, very diligently across. And all the viewers who are going to watch is it, it's important for, for, for the volunteers across the country to, to uh, come out and, and, uh, and show support to each other in uh, where, where we are doing uh, for the love of the game more than anything else. So I think it's very commendable to for what you're doing, uh, uh, Mr. Ranjit, and, and then help yeah, help us understand what else, how how you know, how long have you been in, in, in the Central Part and in, in how has been? So I came to US in 98, you know, and, it, and that at that time in St. Louis that there was no league. So there was, there were two teams that they created in St. Louis and the league was based somewhere else. So when they had home games, right, for that say, they had one ground where they put the mat and play. So when I came to St. Louis in that, that time, there was, this was only cricket happening in St. Louis. So I started the first cricket league in St. Louis. Then, back then. And that league started in 1999. Is the largest league in St. Louis region since then. Which means I have maintained that what's, that what's league, the name of the league number. It's called St. Louis Cricket League. Okay, St. Louis Cricket League. Okay. St. Louis Cricket League. So, in, in St. Louis region, St. Louis Cricket League is the oldest and the largest in, a, in in number of people playing cricket. How many teams do you have? And in the region since then. How many teams and how many divisions? So, we have... Uh, we have, I think at this point, we have T12 format and T15 format. The T12 format has about has, has about 28 teams. Okay, 28 teams. And then T15, yeah, and, and T15. And for St. Louis, it's not a big community. So if I told you anything more than, uh, and this is a big number. For St. Louis community, is a big number. I know for your community, it's a very small number. No, but no, for no, St. Louis no. community, every area has 28 is like a, yeah, 28 is a big number for St. Louis because I think that would cover pretty much everybody playing cricket in St. Louis. Right, right, right. So, and it's for fun. So we, it's, it's not like recreational league, like, you know, even right, though it, right. even though it's for fun, that is the league that has the most number of people, you know, wonderful, wonderful. and the, and the hard, hardball league, hardball league came into effect in St. Louis in 2005 or six, yeah. you know, and in 15, we hosted the youth tournament in St. Louis. So in, in 2015, we did, I mean, I mean, we hosted huge tournament and that is when like, no, people got to know about cricket, cricket a lot. And that, that is when everything started, you know, kind of more youth programs, more hardball leagues, more grounds, more competition, like no, everything started. Had we not hosted the, the, the youth tournament here, in 2015, I think the issues in St. Louis would have been less. I think when I go back, that was the turning point, you know, because all of a sudden what happened, the cricket became, came in, in focus. Until then, nobody really cared about cricket. But because we hosted hosted a national youth tournament in St. Louis with like a lot of teams came at the time, you know, suddenly everybody wanted to, to do cricket, you know, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Because so, now what yeah. happens is that St. Louis has more grounds and, and less people. So if you take everybody who plays who plays cricket in St. Louis, right? And if they all play two matches every weekend, right? We still only use half the ground which we have in St. Louis. Really? Wow. So that is the situation. So right now what happens is like, you no, know, we all paying rent for the ground and we're not able to um, even use all of it, you know? So we could actually add, build some more grounds because the county parks and, and all are like, you no, know, they're, they're, they're very helpful. You know, if I want to build a ground now, I can go and put a contract build it. But point is that, what am I going to do with it? You know, the grounds you that numbers. I have not using it. You need right. numbers. So I have to, we have to first grow the, grow the numbers, you know, and the youth cricket has not grown in St. Louis. So, I mean, I, I personally uh, could not do much because of, of the policy and issues like, and then I got so involved with men's hardball league and youth league uh, across the U.S. that my own local St. Louis cricket league. I mean, we have kids who play cricket, but it's just like uh, there's too much going on. So 
uh, the youth numbers in St. Louis haven't grown. You will not find any team from St. Louis, any tournament in the country where all the kids are from St. Louis. So when I make a team for, for NYCL, more than half of my kids are from everywhere. You know, I get kids from, right, right. from but, but they is, play with me every year. So there is right. work to be done. There is work to be done. Right. So there's work to be done. I think the main is governance, right? No. So unless USA Cricket brings some some kind of step-by-step -step governance, right? No, that, you know, mainly if you are at the, if you are at the ground level and if you run into issues, you know, right? You should be able to go to somebody. Right now, the problem is that it is a jungle. If even though you are a member of USA Cricket, right? Something wrong happens to you. You are done. You deal with, your, right, you deal with right. it yourself, right? Yeah. So I think until there's, there's, there is a governance governance model from top to bottom where a player to a club, to a league, to a region, to a zone, to a national. You know, right. there's, a, there's, there's some, everybody can reach the guy on the bottom, can reach the guy on the top because there's layers in between, you know, and a transparent layer, you know. People who are, people should be held like, you know, held accountable for the role that they are in. Right now, everybody is, is dealing their own fight, you know. So, so one of the so, things that I've noticed in the past three years that the new board has taken over is they haven't really gotten out there and educated them, themselves the, the cricket fabric of the country. And, and, and right. that's one of the reasons what, what, what they've been fed is what they've been eating. That's all there is. You know, once you take a charge of right. administration, you go out and learn about the thing. They've started to do that in recent times, which is a great thing. Right. Hopefully, they, they'll continue doing that to understand what the, what the cricket in America is about. So you're right. Uh, uh, mo, mo, the, the, the layer, structured layer, transparent layers need to be there. And that's what I had proposed recently in an email. And then I, I think in re recently, like yesterday, there was an email from Mr. Hagen saying that uh, there will be a league committee and things like that, which is just came out yesterday. So, so they are, they are, they are, they are trying to trying to understand this. So it's a welcome step if you look at it. But you know, we have to continue right. our work at the gra grassroots. Yep. Right. I think once it once things happen, then I think we also be more inclined to do the work in the proper way. Like, I mean, in 2012 and 13 and 14 and 15, we used to go to go to uh, go to like uh, churches and and county parks and schools and 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 different events. Like, you no, know, just to just to talk about talk about cricket, you know. Okay. But now we're not doing it because there's so much nonsense that we have that we have to handle it you know, apart from the cricket that we don't have time to do that. You know, okay. when we are when we are not as big as we are now, we had more time. You know. We had girls. We have uh, you not believe, but we had a we had a, a girls team in Saint Louis in 2013, 14, and 15. We had team that traveled from out of state to play a girls match Valter series with with us. You know, I will show you. I will show you a picture of that. But sure, it all sure, died absolutely. because what happens absolutely. when when there is not if you're not a strong strong community, the first thing to go is going to be girls program. Then youth program, then school county programs. You know, so these are the first ones who, who, who get hit. The only way the youth program and the women's program will actually develop and grow is if the men's hardball league and softball league are strong. You know, when they do, when they are not strong, then the youth program and the women's program it by default becomes weak because Absolutely. there's no focus on them. You know, right, right. so it's like if you're hungry, right, you can feed other people. Right. So the first thing is that you should be full, you know. So the same concept, like if people have issues to handle for the themselves, then they can't focus on other other things which are not really important. Right. Okay. And okay. you would understand that the importance of the hardball leagues and softball leagues to support youth and women in every region is so important because important. they have the grounds and they have the they have the whole support, you know. So it all fits in, right? You know. It's, um, so there, there are a lot of issues, uh, I think, and, and, and I, I, I travel everywhere in the US and I, I know that St. Louis is, is not the worst place. I've seen more cities with more politics and more drama and more issues. I've seen youth programs that have died, died completely, you know, because uh, of the issues, just simple issues, the, the men's league, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no support and politics, things like that. So. I think 
the governance you know the overall overall governance of cricket in the usa has to improve and zonal right you tell me i do not understand the reason right four years of national governing body right there is no interzonal tournament so right. i mean we are still doing we are still picking players via trial now you know the trial can is a very is very very tricky subjective. thing subjective subjective you know? it's very subjective exactly and if i host trials right you come as a you come to pick player my trial selector i will you will see what i show you right exactly. because i am hosting the trial yep so i could easily hide some kids i could easily show some kids more right you would see what i show you so i think first thing is that if if i have to say i have seen you cricket the trials should be held by somebody who is neutral who does not have a player who does not have a stake who does not who will not who will not benefit by who selected you know right. simple criteria is this you ask these three questions right if if that person going to is going to is going to you know get advantage of hosting the trial handling the trial then he's going to take it Right. so to me that's first thing you know and and why can't we have a zonal structure why can't we have a zonal youth youth men's women's tournament right you know all you do is tell everybody in the zone that get get you get on a table you talk to each other you make a plan you send it to me but if you want your players to be picked into into the national structure right i want you to have a zone right if i'm using cricket i'll say that i'll move back right you know what happens everybody works together everybody starts starts doing it you know things will happen all you as a cricket have to do is empower people right correct yes. but it's not happening yes. so i mean i get very frustrated sometimes because i don't think things are as difficult as we are making it look you know i i i i That's, with you on that part as yes uh, there hasn't been an attempt to educate themselves on on, on cricketing terms but recent times i've seen they they they're doing that and in and in in an r tournament it's happening right there was here and the national coach was here to watch the players which is very heartening to see otherwise you know we are we are conducting a cricket i mean this is the largest league in the bay area in in san francisco bay area and then uh, and you know the, the attention that is you know should be shown by the by the governing body hasn't been there so no i i am with you on that so uh, i think i think this is this is a discussion that needs to continue across the country between right. administrators senior administrators league administrators cricket administrators like you and me and i'm going to be talking to a few other folks uh, in the coming weeks so uh, this dialogue needs to continue because without without right. kind of a conversation uh, we are operating in our silos i'm running my league here you are running your cricket program but uh, but but uh, there is no uh, you know uh, national spotlight uh, for cricket that is being done at a, at a good level by a few folks so definitely yep yeah great uh, discussion uh, ranjit the uh, g thank you very much for for getting on the call and discussing with me we will stay connected so sure. media is the best thing for us to stay connected so let's continue this uh, dialogue about cricket uh, as long as we possibly can right absolutely All Thank right. you very much sir. Take care. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.